We are 25 days away from the first 2024 nominating contest, the Iowa caucuses. 25 days away. I myself had to check the calendar. Governor Ron DeSantis is 56 points behind Donald Trump, and he is tied for second place with former Governor Nikki Haley, according to recent national polling. His main super PAC, Never Back Down, recently named its third CEO in two weeks because the other ones apparently backed down. But to hear Ron DeSantis tell it, the problem here is not him. If I could have one thing change, I wish Trump hadn't been indicted on any of this stuff. I mean, honestly, I, I think that, you know, from Alvin Bragg on, um, I've criticized the cases. I think, you know, someone like a Bragg would not have brought that case if it was anyone other than Donald Trump. And so, you know, he, someone like that's distorting justice, which is bad. But I also think it distorted the primary. Um, and I think it's, it's been, it's been, that those have kind of been the main issues that have happened. Because it's helped last... him, is that what you're saying? And so therefore- It's, it's... Bo both that, but then it also is just crowded out. I I think so much other stuff and it sucked out a lot of oxygen joining me now is mark Leibovich, staff writer for the atlantic mark thank you for being here on what should be your holiday break i appreciate it um it boggles the mind that even now as his is it feels like his campaign is circling the drain ron DeSantis can still not articulate the reality of donald trump in this race and his inability to take on trump what do you make of his assessment of the problems in this race and the oxygen sucking of the indictments. Well, I mean, it's a perfect distillation of Ron DeSantis's kind of feckless inability to take Trump on under any circumstances. I mean, you know, in, in a different world, you could see, see a president who's been indicted multiple times or a former president who's been indicted multiple times and a what was a chief challenger to him um, less than a year ago saying, hey, look, I mean, this is a kind of drama that we didn't want this campaign to be about. This is squarely the fault of Donald Trump. I want presidential candidates not to be indicted, ideally. And it would be nice if we didn't have to run a primary campaign about this and was instead about issues or things like that. Instead, he sort of said this passive, you know, oh, I'm such a victim of this kind of tone in there. And again, it's emblematic of his complete, really, inability to art articulate anything and also to run in any kind of, like, pointed way against Donald Trump. I, I'm, I guess on some level, I'm not that surprised that Ron DeSantis refuses to bow out. I mean, all things being equal, he's not the, the least popular person in the Republican primary. Um, there's like a weirdly high bar to clear that because there's so many yeah. unpopular people. But um, Chris Christie, I must ask you about, who did not qualify to get on the main primary ballot because he did not get the number of needed signatures required. Now, I understand that Christie's in there sort of for like ideological purposes. But what really is the point in staying on any longer? Well, I mean, that's a question I'm sure he's asking himself. I mean, Chris Christie, I mean, it's not so much ideological. It's sort of more of a self-respect campaign on his part. I mean, he um, he had, you know, he lost quite a bit, I think, during, due to his initial alliance with Donald Trump. It was sort of an unholy alliance from 2016 to 2021. And he basically decided to get into the race and prosecute a case against Donald Trump, which I think he did very effectively in a number of debates. And, you know, it's not moving the needle that much for him, although he did sort of reputation gain back, I think, a lot of the credibility he lost a few years ago in the first go-around. So, you know, the question is, as you said, I mean, he, he does have a ceiling here. I think he's clearly cutting into Nikki Haley's, um, you know, just sort of slice of the pie here and probably at some point has to ask himself whether he wants to be a spoiler here. But I think if you sort of look at where they started, uh, Christy v. DeSantis here, I mean, DeSantis had so many expectations. I mean, people were really investing a lot of hope into him as a an alternative to Trump. And he's just been nothing but a floundering campaign since he got in. And, you know, Christy, I mean, obviously, he doesn't look like he's going to win. But, I mean, he's actually come somewhere. And, and uh, DeSantis, on the other hand, has been nothing but a disaster. So, I mean, it's all relative. And ultimately, they're both way behind Donald Trump. But I think they've both sort of gone in different directions. Well, I mean, if the point of Christie's, uh, you know, remaining in this race is reputational rehabilitation, at a point, he's going to endanger all of that by staying in the race if Nikki Haley really is the viable anti-Trump alternative. And I, I'm hesitant to even right. call her an anti-Trump alternative because she's done a very, is it nimble? I don't know. She's done a job um, she, trying to yeah. avoid criticizing Trump while also sort of suggesting that she is 
not a huge supporter of his. Um, but, I mean, right. and in that way, I wonder whether you think we should, as Ben Smith was writing in Semaphore, be, be paying greater attention to this primary process, precisely because you're seeing the rise of Nikki Haley. I think she's only four points behind Trump in New Hampshire. Like, is this more of a race than we imagine it to be? I, I think it is. Um, and it's not just because, you know, I, I want to see a raise. I mean, I think it would be good for the Republican Party and good for the country to see actually a real Republican debate. But I think, you know, I think Haley's recent momentum is real. And I think it'll become more so if Christie gets out between here and New Hampshire, which I, I think he might. I mean, I, you know, who knows? I mean, he can do math as well as anyone else. And and he sort of, again, he would sort of he he seems to be hurting her wood if he stayed in much longer but i do think that look if if haley gets a clean shot at trump and you know that would require christie probably getting out maybe desantis you know if he doesn't perform well in iowa or new hampshire possibly getting out um you know it could be really interesting because yes she hasn't really attacked him that frontally but there's also not a lot of evidence that that attacking donald trump and sort of um, sort of litigating, like, all of the things that he's in trouble for will actually help a Republican opponent, um, you know, it could be a really interesting race going forward, because I do think that there are a lot of anti-Trump people coalescing around around Haley in a way that could be pretty real going forward. Indeed. Mark Leibovich, my friend, thank you for your holiday hours. I appreciate them. Have a great New Year. You too, Alex. See you in the New Year.